from downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Northeast Current. I'm Charlie Charlesworth, your host. Today we have the pleasure of uh, meeting with people from Friends of Lackawanna. Unless you've been living under a log or listening to Telemundo all day, you've got to know that there's something going on with the Keystone landfill. And today we're going to go over some of those facts. Now I'm going to play Sergeant Joe Friday from Dragnet, and I'm going to ask you for the facts and nothing but the facts. All right? All right. Let's start out by talking about the permitting process. Now we've heard a lot about 50 years. What does that entail? What, what, what is the permitting process? So Keystone Sanitary Landfill has a facility that straddles Troop and Dunmore. And every so often when you get close to your capacity, the landfill can seek uh, a permit with the Department of Environmental Protection to expand and keep accepting waste for X amount of time. They typically measure that in terms of tonnage. How much tonnage can they continue to accept? Um, a couple of months ago, they had between eight and nine years left, and then it shifted down to four or five years left. And they're seeking uh, their application to accept roughly 50 more years of waste um, with the Department of uh, the DEP right now. Now, as far as uh, volume of garbage, they're, they're near their limit now, or you say they're within several years of being? That's a good question. Until recently, they had between eight and nine years of, of space remaining. Um, there's been some interesting changes and, and where now the landfill's position is that they have about four and a half years left. Um, so their argument is we need to get this done sooner rather than later because we're going to run out of space and therefore the region will run out of space as well. Okay, now I like to refer to it as Mount Trashmore and it's, it's our own little monument here in, in Lackawanna County. Uh, it's not a frivolous thing, it's something that's very serious. With the amount of uh, volume of waste that you know that they're asking to be to be permitted mm -hmm. to to uh, to dump there. What are the dimensions of landfill at that point? The landfill, what they're seeking now is to grow upward. So they're actually they're not seeking to expand horizontally yet. They're looking to go up. So right now they're looking at the peak. If this permit is approved and it goes through the life of the application, the, the peak of this mount will be 475 feet uh, above ground level, uh, and that would be the tallest structure in this area. Now we we all seen those little scale models in the newspaper and put that in, in, in relation to say like the Statue of Liberty or, or things like that. I, I remember seeing some little scale uh, graph. I don't know the exact dimension, maybe someone else does, but it's it dwarfs everything around here. I think that's right. I think it was two or three times the size of the Statue of Liberty. The permitting process goes through DEP. Right. And uh, does anyone want to address the permitting process, how it works? So. Sure. So uh, the permitting process for the DEP, um, once they have received the application, they um, undergo uh, a review of the application for completeness. Uh, completeness, excuse me. Once the application is complete, they will then um, go through a technical review of the application to make sure that what they're asking for in the permit um, can feasibly be accomplished from a, a technical standpoint. Um, during that process, uh, they do say that the public can comment um, during both phase one, the, uh, the review of the application, and phase two, the technical review. So the public will get a chance to comment and the DEP can respond at that point to any questions or concerns um, the, uh, the community may have. As part of the analysis of the permit process, um, the DEP must weigh a harms-benefit analysis. It's one of um, the major aspects of phase one of the permit review process, where the landfill must quantify the various harms and benefits that the landfill brings to the area. Um, the DEP will review that and weigh its response um, and then go into the technical review. There's an interesting caveat in that analysis and the harms and benefits analysis. In seeking the, in, in providing the application, what they do is they, they quantify all the benefits that the landfill expansion would provide to the area. What they're going to pay workers, the taxes they're going to pay, the equipment they're going to buy, 
I call them cost of running business, but the state looks at that as a benefit. Um, so they, have to they get to quantify all those because they're dollar and they're, they're quantifiable. The harms, there's not one quantified number in any of the harms cited. What they have to do is just show that how they would remediate any potential harm. So they don't have to quantify it. They don't have to say what it might do to the area. Um, I would suggest that a groundwater contamination issue has a substantial, co a substantial cost. And not something you can just brush away with some remediation efforts that might take care of it if there's a problem. So the entire balance, you know, if they're doing a balance and they're looking at remediation, it seems like it's a balance that it's really difficult, if not impossible, for a landfill to lose. You've got numbers and, num and hard data on one side, and yeah, we'll, we'll fix things over here. So the subjective analysis, I think, is what rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And it, it's something that of this importance for our area largely comes down to subjective analysis, which doesn't seem like it's a, a good way to measure something like this. Do they measure the, 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 the damages and the uh, repairs that have to be done on the roadways? Uh, one section of it does do that, and, and the landfill has been gracious enough in their application to pave the area immediately outside of the borough of the, of the dump, um, because that's how the trucks get in there. Um, Tim, you would know actually the, the paving portion of it being in Dunmore. Um, they do clean the roads. With, uh, they have a, tr a truck that hoses down the roads um, every day to keep the dust down, um, which um, do go into the storm basins from um, the Scranton Dunmore Sewer Authority which most of them are blocked right now because they're being washed right into the storm basins. But they keep on the dust um, just from the trucks coming in. Um, I don't believe they use a truck wash to clean the trucks for the t um, that leave the landfill. I, I do believe there was a truck uh, wash there at one time, um, but I've never seen a truck actually use it. Now they bring in, that brings out debris um, um, Whenever you drive through the landfill, you're bringing debris out with you. The threads on trucks is, I, I mean, I can't give you the size of it, but it, a lot of times rocks are thrown. If you've ever been driving down a highway and a rock hits you, there's a good chance that it was a truck that... The, 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 the uh, vehicle code has a, a section called sifting and seeping loads where, uh, you know, they can issue fines for a truck that ha that's losing particulates from the truck, but whether it's storm water runoff or they're washing the roads off themselves that that's going directly into the and to what water source from there is that going into the Lackawanna the Lackawanna um, for the Scranton, the Scranton Dunmore Sewer Authority storm basins would go into so everything that Delaware Maryland and Delaware are fighting with us about our <laughs> sedimentation that's choking the the Chesapeake is is being washed down to those storm drains by those trucks. Well, what's ever coming out in those tires is getting washed into our storm base. It's interesting that the road costs themselves are probably one of the smallest costs or problems with this whole expansion. That's just a minor component when you look at air quality, water quality, right. cost of living, and, and perhaps the most difficult to quantify, but perhaps the largest impact, the reputation of our region. It in no way is helped by this expansion and in, in a lot of people's minds is dramatically reduced uh, if we become known as the dumping ground of the East Coast. I would think that People from outside of the general area of Troop and Dunmore, uh, one of their big concerns would be the amount of truck traffic coming from out of state or from downstate. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the people from the landfill uh, or municipality, can they charge extra fees because they're from outside of the state? That's a good question. The landfill can contract with anyone that they take garbage from on a you know, private basis, a private contract. Um, supply and demand will largely dictate what they charge. Um, unfortunately, we have such a high proportion of, of out-of-state garbage, you know, out of over 60%, as we said, of, of what they take in is out-of-state, um, that they're open for business and they're taking the garbage and they can charge whatever the fair market value, you know, the market will take. Um, the, the, the sad part is our area doesn't seem to benefit financially uh, at all from that extra garbage coming in because it's not a high priority in terms of getting the money back into the area. Uh, you know, Kristen, I, I never thought about, uh, about that response, but um, it's sort of like a bidding process, isn't it? I can go to like a municipality like the city as large as Philadelphia, and I can bid to bring their garbage here? Is that, is that the process that's used? Well, one of the questions that, that it has come up recently because of the changes that they had made to the life of the landfill, the current life, so 
like Pat said, before it was eight to nine years, then it was four to five years. Um, and they said, well, where, where is Lackawanna County gonna, going to um, dump their garbage? What are we going to do? If we run out of space, everyone here is in trouble. There are going to be higher rates. Everyone's going to pay more. Almost like a fear tactic that they were trying to instill in people. And Alliance Landfill, which is located in Taylor, came back and said, no, don't worry. We have capacity. Come to us. We can take your garbage. And it is sort of like a bidding process. It's a contract. You can decide where you want it to take your garbage. So the, I think that it was unreasonable and unfair to put that fear into people when Alliance came back and said, wait, we can take your garbage. Don't be afraid. You don't have to sign the contract that you signed, Dunmore, um, because that that is not the case. So, right. Many many landfills um, our solicitor when we found the landfill fin finally allowed us uh, a lawyer at the meetings. So at first, he would not. Well, definitely, we definitely couldn't have an environmental lawyer. But uh, later on in uh, the stage of this, we did uh, hire uh, a solicitor who was actually our zoning solicitor that handled Taylor in. Newton Ransom's contract, which is a lot better than Dunmar's contract, and he said um, that he used out-of-state garbage um, to, to bring a, to get more money in, in other negotiations, but which Dunmar did not take advantage of um, to, up, up, to up their fee. Um, Tim, I'm, I'm going to follow up on that, but just one more question, Kristen. I'm a businessman, so I want to get I want to get his bunch of this garbage coming into the areas I can possibly get. So I can I can take New Jersey garbage or I can take Philadelphia's garbage and cut them such a great deal. Mm -hmm. So much better than deals from the people around here just to get their garbage that they'll be paying less than what municipalities that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tim you are on the council, uh, borough council right. in Dunmore. And I understand you were the only one opposed to this uh, permit application or extension. You want to give us a, a little rundown of why you uh, why you wanted to do that? Um, well, basically, the contract is for 50 years. We're um, we're leaving our future generations hands tied. Um, the distance from landfill in my house, and I'm pretty uh, in Dunmore wise. I'm pretty far from the landfill. I consider it almost almost a neat screen. I live on I live on Cherry Street in Dunmore. But the closer you live to the landfill, the more in danger you're in. My children, um, I'm, I'm 2.1 miles from the landfill, and that's not a straight line. Uh, my children, one on uh, my youngest daughter and her family is in Troop, one side of the landfill, and my oldest daughter is in Dunmore, probably within a mile. And, they, and my, gran my grandchildren, which children are more susceptible to carcinogens, it just worries the hell out of me. It, it, it scares me to death that they're that close. And the way DEP has responded to the leakage, um, not thinking it was important enough to inform us, it scares the hell out of me. I, mean, that I, I do not see the, the benefits outweighing the harms. It's, the harms are just tremendous. There's, there's really no benefit to this at all, in my opinion. That is why I voted now. All right, let's talk about the deal. <laughs> the deal that Dunmore approved? Did the, did the council approve it? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. The deal they approved, I'm told it's not a very good deal financially for the for the Dunmore or for Troop. I mean, it is, or, you Troop know. Troop already had a deal. Troop had already a deal had a deal? Mm -hmm. So when Keystone decided to apply for the new permit, they came to Dunmore because Dunmore was getting the state mandated minimum um, at that time. So they negotiated a deal, but did not negotiate anything with Troop because Troop has an agreement in place with them. So that's why, after 25 years, 28 years, 28 years, um, Keystone Landfill finally came to Dunmore and was willing to negotiate above the state mandated minimum, which is 41 cents a ton. To put that in some further context, so Dunmore received the state mandated minimum for 28 years. Keystone goes to apply for a massive expansion. It looks good on their application if the host cities receive a little more money. Dunmore's new and improved deal, unfortunately, has already been reported. Is uh, the new deal is already the worst deal in Lackawanna County? The worst deal in Lackawanna from day County. zero. From day zero of the new and improved deal, it's still the worst deal on the books right now. Now, worst deal for Keystone Landfill, <laughs> or great deal for Landfill. Great deal for Keystone. Um, when I you're mean, when you're increasing, when I'm saying Keystone Landfill, I'm, I'm saying uh, there's other landfills. Mm -hmm. Correct. They have better deals than, than the host cities of the other landfills have. 
much better deals than Dunmore has now with their new and improved deal. To put it into context, the state mandated minimum that Dunmore receives is 41 cents a ton. Um, the new agreement with Keystone uh, goes up a 10 cents a year per ton for the first couple of years, then increases at the princely sum of one penny per ton per year. If you run that out to the entire expansion lifetime, what Dunmore Borough signed up for is that we will be getting on a cost, uh, an, on an inflation adjusted uh, value less than 50 years than what they get today. Is there any, I, I won't even go into that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's also important, important to put in perspective that, so we're, December 1st it went into effect technically, so now we're getting a dollar, I believe, um, up from the 41 cents. The state average for host municipality fees is $4.05. 41 cents, $4.05 cents. And five cents is the average host municipality fee in the state. And we're getting a dollar. Let me ask a legal question here. We have several lawyers in the audience. Let's, uh, if a city, borough, township, if the representatives of the community sign a deal that's a very, very bad deal, what can be done as far as legal ramifications? Well, if there was a termination provision in the agreement, we may be able to terminate. But one of the issues that we had, and um, finances aside, one of the things that we objected to at several of the Dunmore Borough Council meetings was the weakness of the overall agreement. It was very one-sided and it didn't have very reasonable standard business terms. For example, how do you terminate? What if one side breaches? How do you amend it if the parties agree? Those types of things were completely missing from the first agreement, the second agreement, and then the third iteration of the agreement. We never saw them. Aren't they required in contracts? I would use contract as a very loose term to describe the agreement. So I think that that's a great question. How do you get out of it? How, or how are they going to now get out of it? Can anyone ever get out of it? It's for 50 years. I think the related point that's, that's tied into that is the DEP lets these towns off on their own. They say, hey, good luck negotiate with the landfill and let us know. There's no support in it. There's, no, there's been no legislative support for, for host municipalities. The state mandated minimum fee has been in place since 1988 or so and hasn't changed a penny. This is the first council that actually went after the landfill. Uh, f for a contract. It's the first, first contract we've had with the landfill. In 28 years? Ever. Okay. Now, I understand that, uh, that the Borough of Troop has an actual agreement, whereas Dunmore does not have an actual legal contract. Or legal well, it is a legal contract. It's just not a good one. How about that? Tell us about Troops. Well, the difference between Dunmore and Troops just physically on paper is three pages compared to 28 pages. So when you take a look at the difference just <laughs> in its length, it, it pales in comparison. When you take a look at the actual content of Troop's agreement um, with Keystone Landfill, um, they have amazing environmental protections within their agreement. They have a duly authorized representative who is a professional environmental geologist who can come in and test the water at its discretion. Um, they have a yearly meeting where they learn about the operations of the landfill, what they did this year, what their plans are next year, and what their long-term plans are. Um, it provides uh, liability insurance um, and, and different precautions in case uh, any environmental hazards uh, happen at the landfill. Let me, let me stop you there. Liability insurance? Dunmore has no liability insurance in their None. agreement? None. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that just seemed odd. No, it has no liability insurance. It has absolutely no clauses in there um, that we've seen in other municipality agreements, not only troops, but others along the state where um, accidents happen, right? So, and when those accidents happen, often it's the municipality's resources that are tied to cleaning it up. If there's a fire, it's our fire departments. Um, and so many other host municipality agreements have in their clauses that say, we're going to provide you with the right tools, monetary, um, 
benefits for you to be trained on how to put out these fires, on how to clean up specific hazards, and make sure that you have the proper equipment to do so. Dunmore's has none of that. So what happens if there happens to be an accident at the landfill? What happens if there's a disgruntled employee who, who gets angry and all of a sudden there's a fire? What happens if there's a landslide? We have no precautions. We have no protections in our agreements where others clearly have that outlined in their agreement. In addition to the environmental protections that we do not have, one thing that pretty much I think everyone at the, at the council meetings wanted and we were told no over and over again was there's no term to our contract. We said, what about if we just make it for the life of phase two? What if we make it for, you know, is it four, five, eight, nine years? Um, and it was unequivocally, there is absolutely no way we, we can put a term in that agreement. They will never agree to a term. So there's no term. It's just forever for the life of the landfill for however long that is. Okay, let me be the devil's advocate <laughs> here. We're talking business. We're talking the garbage got to go somewhere. And, and, and you can't reply anywhere but here. What, you know, the garbage does have to go somewhere. What, what is acceptable to Friends of Lackawanna? We think that our area has done our fair share for not only this county, the state, and the surrounding states. We've taken enough garbage. We've done our part. We've got one of the, th we've got the third busiest landfill in the state of Pennsylvania right now in our backyard. Third busiest. Mm -hmm. In terms of tonnage per day, Keystone is the third busiest landfill in the state. We've taken enough garbage. At some point, the environmental concerns have to start to matter. You can't always just say, well, let's expand. It's got to go somewhere. Let's take more here. We've had enough. Um, over time, you know, it's difficult to see the impact of a landfill day to day, right? But the long-term impacts from an economic standpoint, from an environmental standpoint, from a reputational standpoint, you can't measure it. And you're going to lose that battle every time. So at some point, if this area wants to rebound and turn ourselves around economically, we've got to start with fixing our reputation and fixing our environment. Stopping this landfill at its existing permitted life would be a good first step. OK. One last question. What do you think is the biggest issue that Dunmore faces today with this agreement? I'll go first. No one's looking out for the environment. The contract doesn't. The DEP seemingly isn't. They don't even report the problems that the landfill's got. So someone's got to look after the environment, and everyone seems to point fingers. The legislati legislative body says, hey, it's up to DEP. DEP says, hey, we'll look at the application. Um, it's sad that a group of citizens have to get together and form a, form a uh, nonprofit to get together and try to fight this. Um, someone's got to look after the environment. Uh, and no one's doing it right now. One last comment. I would just echo what Pat said. It, it feels as if we're on an island fighting this by ourselves. Um, we, we, we went to council and there were 150 people who said, don't do this. Stand with us and say no in every way that you can by saying no to this fee agreement. It's not in Dunmore's best interest. Tim was the only one who stood with us. Um, we asked local politicians to stand with us and say, hey, lend your support, write a letter, say, hey, you know, you guys can do better in terms of a fee agreement. Other host municipalities had. And not one representative stood with us in that fight. So where are the legislators on this? And then you have the DEP and, and what Pat said. Here you have the Department of Environmental Protection not protecting our environment. And they have, in other cases, seemingly looked at the application, said the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. There are known issues, but they're going to remediate them. And so we'll allow that expansion to go through. And despite public sentiment that says, hey, we don't want this, they continue to pass it anyway. So I think our biggest concern is who's going to stand with the concerned citizens of Friends of Lackawanna, of the Lackawanna Valley, of Dunmore Troop, and Scranton, who are all affected by this, um, to say it's not right, it isn't fair, it isn't just, it doesn't protect our environment, and we've done our fair share, as Pat said. Now, this if you want to, if people from the outside want to help you with your cause, how do they do that? How do they get in contact with you? What are your, your, your what is your contact information? 
Sure. So um, we have a website, friendsoflackawanna.org, um, and they can also find us at Facebook, um, facebook.com backslash friendsoflackawanna. So we have two resources depending on how folks um, would like to find out more information about us. This is not, in our opinion, and I think it's pretty fair to say, a Dunmore issue. It's not a troop issue. It's an issue for the entire region, and it's an issue for our environment and for our reputation, but also for the safety and health of all of our residents, especially our young children. And I think that we're all here today for that reason. We're not fighting this because, you know, of the finance of it. We're fighting this because we want this area to be a place where, that we love a place that our children love, a safe place to raise our families, and I think that's important. This is not a Scranton issue, it's not a Dunmore issue, it's a Northeastern Pennsylvania issue, and people have to come out and they have to fight with us. Um, I would like to say too, um, uh, Dunmore Council, I, the reason I believe they voted for this contract is because of no trust in DEP. Um, to be held with the same 41 cents that we've had for the last 28 years, we were put in a tough position. Mm -hmm. um, I, we could agree to disagree, myself and council, on issues. I, I thought that this extension w would help DEPs get their 40, uh, their 48 years, and that's what the, well, the main reason I voted no against it because I thought it was, uh, you know, it was, it was going to pass with that. Um, council believes it'll pass no matter what because of DEP's um, reactions to v other situations in this area. There's no trust at all. That's why Dunmore Council voted for this money, um, f the financial part of this contract. Because f there is five council persons, uh, besides my, or, or four others besides myself, that come out in the newspaper to say that they are against phase three. Um, but they were, we were, we were held hostage. And, and I believe that they were forced to take that contract. And I mean, they're really good people that we're stuck in a tough situation with no faith in DEP. And as you see, no help from the legis legislators to help us at all on this. I want to thank our friends from Friends of Lackawanna for being with us today. Thank you so much. And I want to ask you, the audience, to stay tuned for our next segment, part two.